This is the second video in a two-part series I'm making about 3D printing the Max Rebo band to go with my 1-6 scale Jabba's Palace figures that I already have. And if you haven't seen that original video, I would suggest you check it out. You can see it up in the upper right there. But just to give you a quick recap, I found some 3D models of the band on CG Trader. I decided I would print those at 1 6 scale, which meant scaling them up and figuring out what scale they should be relative to each other. I printed all the parts on the Elegoo Saturn resin printer, and while I did have a few issues mostly to do with the models being a little overly detailed, I uh, did manage to figure it out in the end, and I think I got some really good results. At the end of the last video, I had assembled the figures and filled the gaps between the parts with some putty and done some final sanding and things to get them ready for painting, and that's where we're going to start today. The first step was just to prime everything with a gray primer. I do this to give myself sort of a uniform canvas to paint on and help the paint stick as well. One thing I'm going to be trying out for the first time in this video is using an airbrush. I just got this and really have almost no idea how to use it, but I'm learning slowly, so cut me a little slack here, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and put it to use in this project. So we're going to start out with Max Rebo. I used my regular Army Painter war paints that I use with a brush and just thin them down to use with the airbrush, and that did seem to work fairly well, although it's a little difficult to get the right consistency for the paint. I think it might have been actually a little bit too thin here. Next we have the first of several mistakes I made in this project. I was trying the, I think this is a soft tone wash from Army Painter, and it really was not an appropriate choice for this. I kept going with it just to see how it would turn out, added some highlights with dry brushing and so forth, but it was really not turning out the way I had envisioned. As you can probably see, it's just kind of a weird splotchy mess. So I was probably going to just repaint this entire thing anyway, but then while I was painting the nose, I found that the paint was actually peeling off, which I've never had happen before, and I think maybe it has something to do with using the airbrush and perhaps uh, thinning the paint down too much. I don't know. But when I tried painting over this, you could clearly see where the part had peeled off, and, you know, there was just no way to, to paint over this. So I decided to just start completely over with a little lacquer thinner and strip the paint right off of there. I wasn't even 100% sure that the lacquer thinner wouldn't dissolve the resin, which uh, would have been interesting. But no, it seemed fine, and I was able to remove the first uh, attempt at paint without too much trouble. It's not unusual for me to start over after painting something, but I've never had to actually strip the paint off as far as I can recall. I guess we can just chalk this up to my inexperience using an airbrush. So here we have the stripped figure, and it looks pretty much fine. And luckily the putty didn't seem to dissolve either, so I can just start over and repaint it. This time I decided to use some actual airbrush paints that are pre-thinned for use in an airbrush and should be the perfect consistency. You may notice I put each of the figures on a piece of cardboard with some strong double-sided tape, thinking that I could hold the piece of cardboard instead of the figure. Although it turned out that the figures are heavy enough that I didn't really trust the cardboard or the tape not to break, so I didn't end up using it that much, but it did help them stand up a little bit. After the first coat was dry, I went ahead and did some dry brushing of highlights on there. Of course, I skipped the wash step that gave me troubles last time. This was going okay until I uh, went a little overboard, and this can be a problem when you're dry brushing things. At least for me, I'm sometimes tempted to sort of add too much of a light color so that you can really see it when you're doing it, and it can end up looking all kind of chalky and gross, and unfortunately that's what happened in this case. So I decided, well, I'm probably gonna have to repaint this again, but I took some of the blue uh, tone from Army Painter, it's basically a, a blue wash, and tried putting that on there just to see what it would look like. Occasionally things come together unexpectedly, I wouldn't say it looked bad exactly, but it wasn't quite what I was going for. And so I decided to just paint over it. Didn't need to strip the paint in this case. It was just a matter of taking some more blue and going over the top of it. And I resolved to be a lot more subtle with my highlights this time. And also maybe uh, to not go as dark with the color as well. And here I am starting with a, a bit lighter of a base color, as I said, and just going in 
very carefully and putting in some highlights by hand for the most part. I did do a little dry brushing on places like the elbows and the hands where there are clearly defined wrinkles, but elsewhere I just did it all by hand and tried to keep it quite subtle as you can hopefully tell here. And I, in the end, I'm really happy with the color. It's a vibrant blue, but not too blue, if that makes sense. So after I was done with his skin, I went ahead and colored the eyes black. There's not a lot to Max Rebo's color scheme, really, but that kind of makes getting the blue correct all the more important, I think, and also little details like these eyes. I did end up making use of that blue tone that I was using earlier for some of the details like his eyelids here and the recesses of his wrinkles, but I was careful not to overdo it as I had earlier. After the eyes were dry, I took some gloss coat and brushed it on. This goes on cloudy but dries clear and will make them look wet and more realistic as eyes. After that, all I really had to do was paint his little diaper here, or loincloth, I don't know what you want to call that. Uh, it's not necessary to be too detailed on his lower half here because 99% of the time he's going to be inside his organ, but I like it to look presentable at least. I decided to go with kind of a light gray initial coat and then I dry brushed it with white on top of that. Then I went in and colored the ends of his fingers and toes with a sort of tan color with white highlights. And here is the final Max Revo. I think he turned out pretty well. I'm happy with the shade of blue and more subtle highlights and shading that I went with here. So pretty happy with this. But of course, Max is nothing without his organ. And I had a little trouble painting this. I was going with a dark brown initial coat and I just had trouble controlling the airbrush well enough to get it to be a uniform coat. This is actually some of my better attempts and you can see it's pretty blotchy. So clearly I have a lot to learn when it comes to using an airbrush, although I could feel myself getting a little more comfortable with it as I went along. And thankfully once this paint dried, uh, you couldn't really see the blotchiness very much at all. So I was happy about that. One thing I really wanted to try with the airbrush was to use it for some shading. So I had black in the airbrush and I was using it to try and uh, kind of add some definition to where the body of the organ meets this uh, metal strip with the rivets on it. In the end, I ended up using too much of the black so that you can't really see the brown as much as I had intended you to be able to, but it actually looks pretty good, so I'm happy with it. Here on the back, you can see where all those rivets fell off, as I mentioned in the past video, and uh, I'd originally planned to use some epoxy putty or something to remodel those and put them back on, but I decided it really wasn't worth the effort because it's in the back where nobody's going to see it, and, uh, you know, it's fine. I painted the valves on the front of the organ with a gold color, gave it a couple of coats of that, and then I went on top of that with a brown tone, brown wash from Army Builder. These tones are essentially thick washes that will go down into the nooks and crannies and hopefully stay there and dry better than if you had just watered down some paint to make a wash. The keys on the keyboard seem like they're supposed to be kind of an old ivory color. So I started with a sort of yellowish brown and then gradually added white to that until I was sort of dry brushing on almost pure white at the end. And I think it turned out really well, actually. After that, I just had to take care of some of the details, such as these rivets, which are apparently supposed to be gold or brass color. And I did some of the trim and other parts in a sort of gunmetal color. And here's Max in his organ after some final cleanup and whatnot. As I said, I had really intended the brown to be a little bit more noticeable, but you still can see it. There's still some variation in color there. So I'm relatively happy with this. And as a whole, especially if you're seeing it in person in full size, it's really quite impressive. Next, we're going to move on to size snoodles. Now, I wasn't actually painting these one after another. I was kind of doing them simultaneously to some degree. So you're going to see me make uh, some of the same mistakes again for that reason. But bear with me. So the first example here is me using the uh, Army Builder Flesh Wash on top of her, thinking that it would bring out her sort of wrinkles and uh, facial features and so forth, but it ended up just making it kind of a big mess. I was thinking it was going to be a lot 
lighter and more subtle of a color and it just <laughs> did not turn out that way so i ended up just repainting over here with a brush to get rid of this and at the same time i decided to go with a slightly darker yellow color which would allow me to add highlights a little bit more easily and in this case i think using the dry brushing worked pretty well because i didn't go with too light of a color for the highlights and i did come in after this and add some highlights manually as well Next, I took a fine detail brush and some of that uh, brown wash and just put it in the details, the crevices and things, instead of using it as a literal wash. I was basically just using it as paint uh, to kind of fill in the shadows. And I think it actually worked relatively well. I think I actually could have gone a little bit more subtle with this, maybe uh, watered it down a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And here we have the number one thing I wanted to use the airbrush for, and that was Sai Snoodle's spots. She's got a bunch of kind of oddly shaped spots all over her body, and they have very kind of faint edges, which would be difficult to do, not impossible, but difficult to do with a brush. So I wanted to use the airbrush for this, but I was really scared that I was going to accidentally spray out a bunch of paint and have to repaint what I had just finished here on her skin. Luckily, uh, I was careful about it and it didn't really have much in the way of problems. And I think it turned out really nicely. Once I had finished her skin, I went and painted her skirt brown. After it dried, I went over it with a dark wash a couple of times to bring out the details before going back and painting some accent colors with different colors of brown. And I also went in and used a little uh, silver and gold for her beads that are hanging down and added some highlights with lighter brown for her mouth. I started with a dark brown and went over that with some red before doing the inner parts with uh, black and brown kind of mixed together. Her eyes are relatively simple. There's a initial coat of dark brown and then some white for the whites of the eyes and finally some blue. And then to do the pupils, I just did a circle of black inside that. Once this had dried, I went over it with a little gloss coat, which I also put on her lips. Finally, you can't forget to put her eyelashes in because they're kind of a defining feature. So I did go ahead and put those on, even though they're not actually part of the sculpt. I just had to kind of guess where they should go. Obviously, I didn't show... Every part of this, including the uh, mic stand, which I painted off camera, but I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I was stepping a little outside of my comfort zone with this one, with all of the airbrush elements, but I think it turned out about as well as I could have hoped. And she's definitely by far the most complex of the three members of the band to paint. Finally, we have Droopy McCool. Now, I tried using the airbrush to do an undercoat for him, but found that I was getting a lot of spattering and clogging. And as it turned out, the paint that I was trying to use with him was sort of partially dried. There were little bits of dried paint. It's been sitting around for over a year. And while that's not that big of a deal for painting with a brush, I found that an airbrush is a lot more finicky about that kind of thing. So I just decided to use a brush for him. By this time, I had pretty much learned my lesson in terms of how to paint these guys, so I uh, did some very subtle white highlights and then went in with the, uh, the brown wash and painted in some of the fine details. One technique that I stumbled upon and wish I had used for size noodles was using a second brush to kind of smooth out the hard edge for the, uh, the brown wash here. I think that really did help make it look a little less artificial. For his pants, I just gave them a couple of coats of brown and then used a brown wash to get into the wrinkles there a little bit, but really this was a very simple paint job. And I did the same thing with his nails and his nose, although I did add some gloss coat on top of that to make them shiny. Finally, after painting his flute, I glued it in place here between his fingers and I was done. And despite being such a simple paint job, which took me probably a half or a third of the amount of time of the other characters, if you include Rebo's organ, uh, I think it actually turned out really well, and I'm really happy with it. In a moment, we'll see what the band looks like all together, but before that, I want to tell you about today's 
sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics, including fine art, design, and photography. There are no ads, and they're launching new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Recently, I've been taking a class from my favorite tech YouTuber, MKBHD, called YouTube Success Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, where he shows his entire process from start to finish. And I found it fascinating to see how one of the highest-end YouTubers goes about making videos, and I think I found a few things that I may be able to apply to my process as well. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And here's the band together at last, and I really couldn't be happier with how it turned out, especially when you see them here as a group. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult to judge scale, so I thought I would give you the original vintage Kenner Rebo band as a comparison. You can see they are quite a bit different there. We can go ahead and take a bit of a closer look at each of these so you can see the details a little bit better. There's good old droopy. Now I didn't bother to fill in the holes at the uh, bottom there just because there's really no point in doing that. I felt uh, can't be seen anyway. Here is Max. I like the way his eyes turned out. Very glossy. And of course, oops, you can go ahead and uh, look at him in his organ as well. Uh, I think I can refine my airbrush technique a bit, but uh, for this, I'm pretty happy with the end result. And it's quite hefty and large, you know, it's like a big bowl. Finally, if we look at Sai Snoodles here, she's probably the one I'm proudest of. Just, you know, in terms of how she came together with a bunch of different techniques that I wasn't entirely confident in. But I think, uh, oh, excuse me, I think she turned out really well overall. Finally, I want to show you what these look like in place when I've put them in my Sideshow Collectibles 1 6 scale Jabba's Palace display. This is in one corner of my office, spread over three Detolf cabinets from Ikea. And it's getting a little on the crowded side, but you can see I was able to fit them here next to Java in this little alcove display area that Sideshow sold a while back. And seeing them here, I really think all the work I put into this was worth it. I've already had some people ask me if I can print or paint a Rebo band for them. Unfortunately, I really just don't have the time to be able to do that. What I'm trying to accomplish with these videos, aside from just being entertaining, is to show people what's possible with 3D printing and all the different possibilities for things that you can make. And I'm hoping that some people may uh, be inspired to try some of these things on their own. In this case, it's allowed me to add some of my favorite characters to my display, which otherwise might never be possible. If you managed to watch all of both of these videos, thanks very much for sticking with it, and I'll see you next time. This video was made possible with the support of my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs right here and Angelica Brady. Thank you very much for your support. I actually used some of the money from my Patreon supporters to purchase the airbrush that I used in this episode, so you can see how I am actually putting it back into the channel. You can support me too for as little as $1 a month and get things like early access to videos, behind the scenes posts, and more. Thanks for watching.